Yo, yo. What up? What up? Yo. What up? What up? Hey. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Benny's crib. What up? Oh, uh, yeah, just leave your shoes over there. It's cool. Yeah, thanks. Does that sound cool? Yo. Yo, what up? Welcome to Benny's crib. Live, Portland, Maine. Two of the best bands in the main hip hop scene, <laughs> yeah. right here. Um, yep. I'm with the homie, someone who's been on the podcast before, but we now we needed their solo episode, and now we've completed at least four out of four visible members of Resample um, on the podcast. We have one's got a solo episode. Bruv got a solo episode. Crown got one. Yeah. And- Pizza is here at Benny's crib. What up, what up, what up? How are you, my friend? Good, dude. How you doing? Good. Ben and I, Bizza and I um, have known each other for a good minute now like, here in the scene. He was on the podcast a good year and a half ago. I'm happy to say we hang out every now and then, too. We're pretty good friends. So uh, Yeah, you come great. over. Grill sessions, everything, man. Oh, yeah, I've been hanging outside, being safe with it. Got my yeah. vaccine and shit. Feeling good, man. So uh, it's going to be a fun one. I think I'm going to know oh, yeah. what you're going to answer for this one, but it's a first <laughs> question, so I got to ask it anyway. You talked about it in the Resample podcast. Definitely go check that out at home if you haven't yet. Um, but Bizza, acclaimed 207 producer, beat maker, musician, hip hop artist, B artist, Resample resident, Grill Master. All of it. <laughs> grill Master. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What? is your first memory of hip-hop oh dude probably like my first memory is my first memory is like the shitty you know those mixtapes you used to be able to buy back in the day or like the cds that were like all the hot hits going on at the time yeah yeah, dude i definitely had a few of those when i was younger but got out of that my first like real memory of like getting into it is probably uh, using LimeWire to download like some diggable planets uh, mm. uh, MP3s, and I was just like, "What is this? This is crazy! Like, I haven't heard this before." You know, yeah, it's a wild group. You know, you think of obviously um, cool like that, Rebirth is slick, and um, dude, what's that other one on that album? Fuck, where I'm from, maybe is that. I don't know. On that I, one? The, the album from them, Blowout Comb, is amazing. Yeah. Too. I just can't remember any of the fucking songs on that one. Um, their first one is called Re- Reaching, A New right, Reputation yeah. of Time and Space. The second one that I'm thinking was, uh, maybe it was Where I'm From, because now I'm looking at the, the uh, track list, and I'm like, what was the other song I really liked from that? I'm gonna say it's that one, probably, or nickel bags, maybe. No, I don't even that was a yeah, that was yeah, that's cool like that. I think. Regardless, Same. I fucking love um Diggable Planets and then um Yeah Home. If you never heard that back at home, yo, I mean Guru, Jerry the Damager. Um I know, yeah, that's crazy, man. Like stupid, stupid. And then if you really want to get big about it, in my opinion, Butterfly, I believe is their name. Um Ishmael. Butterfly, yeah, aka yeah. Butterfly. He's one of the best rappers of all time who doesn't get his due. Like, if, if you're making that, like, who are MCs that people, you know, like for a while it'd always be like A Z or shit like that. People made those lists, but like for real, for real, Butterfly is from one of the best 90s groups that was the most one of the most like genre bending, well executed, just hip hop groups in Diggable Planets. And then his work in yeah. Palaces. Have you heard of Shabazz Palaces? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, he can't. That was like like late 2000s maybe or like yeah. early 2010s early started doing that yeah they have that album uh is it f- no it's not called free press and curl it's called black up but the first song free press and curl when i heard that i was like the fuck it's just- yeah dude he's a he's a great rapper man like he's there that was just a such a just two albums and then done like i would love to know the story behind that because it's like something you can't find really yeah. They don't, and they're back doing shit again now and like mm. playing shows all the time. I actually got to go see them like a few years ago, which was sick, man. That was oh, with the live band. Like oh, sick. First impressionable memories, and then you get to go see them live. That's nothing more beautiful than that, yo. Yeah. 
It was tight, man. It was super tight. Well, let's keep it going then. I know where you're from. I've inter- interviewed you before. <laughs> People who don't know, break down Bangor, man. Where, where'd you grow up? Uh, just B- Bangor, Maine, man. You know, little neighborhood, just like pretty traditional little life, I guess, you know. Living in Bangor, there's not too much going on, though, in the beat scene especially. Mm. So, you know, just – I did a lot of other shit, though, when I was growing up. That was fun up there. It's a great place to grow up, man. But mm. definitely, uh, like, music is – they have, like, a great, like, like I don't know, punk scene, like, hardcore and shit, like, all that. That's awesome up there, but and there's a couple of venues popping up every time. I have to go there a lot for work. Every time it's getting bigger and bigger. So yeah, what's that? The, you Bangor, know? the Bangor Arts Exchange or something like that? Yeah, that's like some new spot that's been going on for that's a while. Kind of I think. And then um, that Waterfronts had some good shows too. That I now that I think about. Yeah, it. But yeah, yeah. When they do the, some of the smaller stages down there too, like that's mm-hmm. really yeah, really I, dope. I think of a. Uh, <laughs> I always fucking think of Trailer Park Boys when I think of Bangor because because <laughs> the, the, the train tr- convention trucking episode. Well, there's like a trucking episode where like yes, uh, one of the main characters yeah. bubbles. He gets like stuck in Bangor because yeah, Ray. Yeah, yeah. Ricky's dad, Ray, who's actually not handicapped, but he's in a wheelchair for most of the show. He ends up becoming yep. a trucker again. He drives from Canada to Bangor and then he gets arrested for prostitution. I think. <laughs> yeah it's like, like in that. a phone booth and he's like i'm in bangor maine <laughs> oh my god Dude, you should yeah. sample that that'd be so funny like that I'm yeah bangor, maine. oh man yeah that i've never even thought about that there's so too many memorable quotes in trailer park boys you know yeah. i would binge watch that like straight through so i had no time to be like oh yeah this is I should, but yeah dude, dude there is bangor some rewatch. there's some there's some gems dude yeah for real yeah. for real well let's kind of break down um some of your youth now i remember specifically the first time i talked to you in podcast form uh you mentioned i believe skateboarding was kind of impactful right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but in your huge. own words kind of break down um maybe first like skateboarding and how impactful that was as a hobby for your youth but even more so maybe some other hobbies if they come to mind too yeah i mean skateboarding was huge like I think that was something I started really young and kind of st- stuck with it through the years, kind of on and off for a while, and then got real back into it, like middle school age. Mm-hmm. And that was just, that was huge, man. That was just some of the best memories I have, you know? I spent mm-hmm. so many days just at the skate park, chilling. You know, you meet people, I don't know, that you wouldn't normally meet in that age that yeah. I was at, I guess. You know, yeah, you yeah. get a lot of influence, good and bad. <laughs> like You learn from it and uh you know music through that was just that was crazy um so yeah some of my best memories with that I played a lot of other sports though too growing up man like baseball basketball like I was in you know all those things up through middle school that was fun mm-hmm. good times like I still like to ball out every every now and then yo, that I didn't actually that know baseball, you balled, yo. we got a ball I, I mean I'm yeah not kidding, man. come on I love yeah ball, I'm not like great but I still like it. That was like my it. second sport, uh, basketball or baseball. Sorry, it was like that was what I, I yeah. played a lot of. I love yeah. basketball. I'm not like basketball I didn't play is- growing up, but I just I just love the sport, man. I love being physical with people. I love like pushing people, not pushing, but you know, I love like kind of just yeah posting up. Just that'd be sick to get some games going, like three on three. Oh, so dude, like I'm, I'm yeah, not even. There's some nice courts too, man. There's like yeah, nice courts there's some good courts. Yeah. Play. Well, uh, I'm not gonna. I never. So you want some advice though? Never on cam or I don't like no, that. Afterwards. I know really on say. camera blow up the spots, but no, I got some spots. I know you got yeah. some spots. You we'll, text me, yeah, we'll ball it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. never give up the local spots. Food spots, <laughs> no, yes. never always do. let put people know where the food spots are because oftentimes, yeah, I try and give more business to the customer for the restaurants and businesses I like. Like, I want, I want to see. Uh, my favorite restaurants shine and succeed. This podcast is sponsored by Yardy Ting. However, when it comes to like local spots, like smoke spots, basketball courts, ain't nobody knowing, bro. You take people no. to them, yeah. don't tell yeah. on camera. That's a yeah. guessing game for all the young <laughs> Learn that at a young age and you won't have your spots blown up. 
because side tangent, I had this place in the woods my homies and I would party at. This is nuts. It started out my two friends lived on either side of this woods. There was a sand pit in the middle, and they showed me it when I was like 12. We shot fireworks yeah. off, allegedly. And we started smoking weed out there, allegedly. We showed two dudes who were friends with us, but they also had like other friend groups. We all kind of did because it was a small town, but like they were more like hanging out with other people consistently. Yeah. And popped off with us one night. And yeah. they showed everybody that spot. Three or four years later, bro, blown up. Like there was parties that there was like 50 deep out there. I, we, yeah. I wasn't even there. Like the people that put the spot on weren't even there. There's cars out there. Um, like it was getting nuts. And then the cops and the fucking fire trucks ended up coming out there and like it got super serious, bro. So yep. that's what that's happens, why. man. That's a cardinal rule. You don't do that, you don't blow up the spot. But now I learned that lesson. Very, very unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Let's keep it going with the youth though and skateboarding and that um kind of time period in your life um was there anybody that you met who might have been important to your maybe present maybe someone you might have um done some beats with be a resident at resample with can i think is there anyone maybe we're forgetting here oh dude i mean there's a lot of people man i'm pretty so, much just saying yeah. the bruv but yeah, I mean, he definitely is the one that's, I was going to say, there's a lot of people, but he's the one that has, like, I've consistently kind of stuck with since that age group. Yeah. Like, I think we knew each other when I, we were, like, I don't know, I was playing Little League. I knew who he was, and we, he knew who I was. And then we started hanging out a little older. We you remember started... when you first hang out? You and Bruv, because Bruv, for those who don't know, go check the podcast with Bruv and I, because Bruv's awesome. Some of the best beats in the state are being made from him right now. But, um. Brother's another 207 beat maker, producer, artist, hip hop musician, beat musician, whatever. And um, yeah. he's a part of Resample. He's a resident. And Biza and Bruv kind of grew up together. So pretty wild for the people at home who didn't know that. Um, do you remember yeah. the, the first time you kicked it, like one on one? Oh, dude, probably like when we meet up at like the skate park or something. And I was probably, I don't know, maybe third. 13 or 14 pretty yeah, so young still barely yeah, you know school. we yeah we both be getting like rides from our parents there like oh who's gonna drive us there today or blah 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 and we would we chilled pretty hard i mean we uh connected on a lot of shit we we're both definitely uh had a lot of the same interests at the mm -hmm. time <laughs> you know so uh yeah we chilled a lot dude we skateboarded a lot and then just kind of it drifted for a bit because school and everything that happens life. when you know you segment up he was a couple grades ahead of me and shit yeah and life and whatever but then started hanging out heavy again uh, like, i forgot how, how young are you Wait, when were you born 94 so well, 26 yeah yeah i was a couple years older than us right yeah he's like 27 i think mm -hmm. or 28 maybe i'm 20 i just turned 20 when's your birthday he's 28 birthday? I just turned 27, so. Mine's uh, November 8th. Ooh, we're going to have to have yeah, a party. So I'm late. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like super safe so. time, too, hopefully, knock on wood. Back in my mind, I'm yeah. like, don't forget, there's a pandemic still happening, like, heavily else in the world where they can't get vaccines and shit. What if I a know. new variant starts to, like, pop off and make its way over here? I'm not going to think yeah. about it, but, yo. But you got it, stuff. yeah. But, like, let's yeah, be straight, just... yo. Don't fucking take our freedom that we have now for uh granted because remember last year when like this shit all popped off for the first time and it was like whoa oh, yeah i haven't been prepared really for something like this in my life and everyone started freaking out and doing stupid like crazy shopping now is the time like i would say in moments of peace you have to prepare for moments of war meaning that don't be like anxious and tense all the time but like have a couple back stock of some canned goods maybe have like an extra eight pack of toilet paper you know you don't have to have like yeah. fucking 32 packs but like just have a little <laughs> bit stocked up like maybe know how to defend yourself a little bit you know keep your mental yeah. health and your physical health right like that's a gem i'm not gonna lie it's a gem prepare for moments of war and moments of peace because you won't be able to prepare for war when you're in it that's my and then, again yeah. another gem but i don't know why i'm talking about you're giving war. away for for free tonight man. we're trying yeah. bro we it's all about Damn. building up your community Fuck your system Fuck the top down. We're going to build it from the ground up. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, allegedly. And yeah. um, 
You got me off topic. This is why I can't. Uh-huh, dude, this, is, this podcast is so funny, bro. Cause it's a I mean, conversation. Like, we're just, yeah, we're kicking it. Just like chilling. Yeah. When I started doing this. I had a couple friends out here, but like now I'm literally just talking to fr- like my friends most of the time. Like, I know. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, Ben, there has to be a structure. Like you're talking about preparing for war and <laughs> partying in the woods in Old Orchard Beach. This is business crib though. Just we got to focus life, on you. Yeah, that's true, though. That's true. That's why I like. It. That's why we're friends, man. You, you, yeah. keep, you keep fuck pushing yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Um, I'm loving it, bro. The question I have to ask you now is, you know, we hear about where you grew up, your hobbies, some people that you were hanging out with, but music is such an integral part of your life now. I want to hear about how it was at that point in your life. Was music around you growing up? Maybe either like in your family, or were you listening to it actively as a youth? Yeah, I mean, I was def- I was listening to a lot of music younger and uh, started playing guitar. I honestly don't remember why I wanted to do that, but I remember just being like, yeah, I want to I wanna learn to play guitar. And so I don't remember what age that was. That was probably like fourth or fifth grade, whatever age that is, 10, what is that? I don't know, something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, so that's how I got into like, exploring more music and playing music and learning like oh that's like i like doing this like this is this is fun you know you remember what like model it was what guitar yeah it was just like a classic uh guitar. yeah it was like one of those yamaha like strat knockoffs that they had i don't know <laughs> okay. if they still make those pacifica yeah, that's what it is yamaha pacifica that's pretty funny you remember sunburst. that I was, uh... sunburst yep sunburst. Oh, man. good memory that was bro. like a cool it was a cool guitar at the time I got to oh, look in tight. your band camp real quick. I was listening to your uh, music today. Oh, nice, dude. You know I, what beat not, I got so much new shit and, ha- like, the stuff, that, it's so funny. Like, the stuff that's on there is old to me at this point, which is, it's dope. Like, I, those albums that are, or at least, like, the last couple tapes in my mind. Everything, I like everything you do, bro. That's, I appreciate that, man. It's hard to come from the other side listening to the old shit and you're like, oh, dude. Like, yeah. Dude, that's I why. I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I got so type- much. They'll keep going sorry uh i was just gonna say i just have so much shit i'm sitting next to my mpc right now it's like on i was just fucking with some shit before Dude, we met up and like... i was playing speed bumps i bring up that tape because of this you were mentioning guitar i really love yeah. the song air guitar <laughs> dude yeah that's no, a no, 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 no. Yeah, oh we started playing that's so weird um, <laughs> but uh Dude, nice um i like i didn't even hit play i think i just like bumped the screen on accident but um <laughs> this yeah. is a p or this is like a message to not only you biza but all uh producers out here in the 207 if you got a lot of shit and you're getting like that dump anxiety or just like dump overthinking you're like i don't know what to do i got all this music legit like hit me up i would love to be like yo here are the 20 beats that i heard that clicked with me the most after a week or two of listening if you want like we could do like a rhyme beat x whatever producer like beat tape or like rhyme beat curates beat tape because a lot of you know in the hip-hop yeah. it happens a lot there are a lot of like figures and journalists who will like curate stuff and shit but here's the tough thing about that could it. be cool man yeah it's a cool idea and concept but we're all very like you know that uh erica badu quote where she's like i'm an artist and i'm sensitive about my shit at the end of the day yeah. i don't care who you are every artist is sensitive about their art in some way and yeah that's a good thing because you should be in my opinion like you should take your fucking art be critical and about it yeah. yeah and it can be tough sometimes if you bring in another force to be like yo like you should have these beats and these songs and then if you don't click with that and you don't want to disappoint that person or you can't match the energy it can be really hard so my first yeah. thing is i'm always here for people if they want to uh bounce ideas and maybe you have <laughs> me help them curate but b i understand that you're an artist who's this is your baby, yo. I'm not going to, like, at the end of the day, be like, we have to do it one way. I'm just here to oh, be yeah. an ally to every musician because I'm not going to front. God gave me two fucking beautiful ears, and I trust my gut like a motherfucker. So Yeah, man, you got you got, you got some good taste, dude. I trust your ear. Thanks. I trust them. That means a lot, I trust bro. both of them. Yeah. yeah. Two of them, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that would be, that'd be cool, man. Like, uh, yeah, I have, I have a lot of shit. Stuff so from when I was just making beats basically f- to play at resample like and i was just like oh i just need to make some shit to play that. this month you have that's one of my favorite that i missed oh, i came i get so fucking sad <clears throat> when you're <laughs> at and like you get to hear like unreleased shit that's the 
best. And then it drops like months later, like when one dropped timing contrast, I was like, I feel like I've heard all of this. I resampled. This is so fucking dope. And oh yeah. Yeah. I'm getting off topic again though. So what happens? You're no, but a lot of music. That's a good that's segue. That's a big though, part actually. of my life too. So it, it's not off top. It's, it's on. You're right on, dude. You're right. I'm just hard on myself. You man. know? Yeah. So that's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about you wanting to make music because in my uh research i saw that you've been dropping on Bandcamp. you fucking oh yo you've been dropping on Bandcamp <laughs> 2012 you're like a knowledge era <laughs> of like being on Bandcamp, bro i was young yeah that's pretty young yeah. were, you, were you in your teens when you were dropping that shit bro like 19 yeah what is what is 2012 that's yeah uh, 18 19 18 19 right there was when i probably first got something to make a beat with and was like i want to make beats like this is what i want to do like yeah you know, right at the end of high school and it well, was uh oh perfect yeah. that was my next question i was be like when did you start to you know want to do this and that was probably right at the end of high school it sounds like yeah i had played a lot of like guitar and like jammed with people and shit through high school that was like that was how i made and played music i guess a lot of the time and that was awesome i just ended up kind of you know I don't know. I morphed. I saw some shit. I was listening to a lot of classic hip hop. I was super into that. I was like, man, I really want to make this. Like, this is what I want to do. It's, I had watched, I think I watched a video of like a rap music or something one time. Someone played that. Yeah. And I was like, huh, that's kind of dope. Like, that's wow. a cool machine. Then, like, the went MPC, to a, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, a, I think it was a 1000. And yep. then I went to a, a, one of my friends' house and it was like, super random he had had he had one at his house and i was like sick can i play with this dude and he had like some samples loaded up and i was just like oh yeah this is i need this like this is how i want to do shit and then got one and i still have it to this day you're making so me from 18 Fuck. yeah i bought it on ebay dude i got like a fucking killer deal almost new when i got it cheap back before they got kind of expensive and i like i said i still have it so that's like eight eight nine years now yeah the yeah. sp and the uh what do you mean the uh, sp 404 yeah and um the mpc at yeah that, like are kind of like the two that i think i'd probably get into if i started getting beat pads yeah i have sp too i have that that's what i just used to play beats more than anything yeah they're more i don't know how the fuck to like make a, a beat on the sp <laughs> <laughs> yeah <that's a> good <laughs> it's all ear man yeah you got good ears though so you might I got you know, big ears yeah too, bro. <laughs> you can hear that shit um well, they're both like that's it they're both my, my i my do feel like main shit that's hard to have though like that <laughs> how the fuck would you be able to like listen and <laughs> i don't even want to think about that shit yeah well, you just listen and chop to fucking ear man it's yeah. like it's cool i just don't i'm like yeah i can see a waveform oh but i like sps because they're very very um easy to transport like they're so small Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. You put batteries in them? Yep. Like, fucking, yeah, yeah dude. I've done that before. Let's tell you. Well, cool. So, it sounds like end of high school, YouTube, people in your life. Shout out whatever homie had a fucking NPC at that time, dude. That was lucky. Um, Lanny Winchester. Shout out, Lanny hey, Winchester. Hey, if you're watching this, you get a beef patty from Yardy yeah. on me. Just hit me up. Uh, <laughs> I'll Venmo you the three bucks, and if you spend it on anything but a patty of your choice, I'm going to be very upset. Um, Let's talk about that time period. What were you producing on? What what software were you using? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, dude, FL9, which I was using up until just recently. So yeah, nice. Never switched it up, dude. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> Fruity Loops. So, so yeah. Yeah, for those who don't, it changed to FL Studio. But back in the day, yeah. it was Fruity Loops. Oh um, yeah. When we think about this time period, were there any? just memories or lessons that you remember learning like in your early days of the craft uh of the of vague of question this uh yeah i don't i guess like i don't maybe remember like the lessons i learned but i know what i was like looking at to learn to make beats i guess mm -hmm. i don't know i was watching just a lot of like DJ Premier makes a beat, Alchemist makes a beat. Like, you know, those type of videos they had on YouTube that were huge, but harder 100%. to find back then. 100%. Yeah, someone in the studio making a beat, and I'd just be like, what are they doing? Like, kind of want to see, you know, just like, 
and just be like even if I didn't extract knowledge from that I was just like all right I want to go I want to do that and actually a uh, huge influence in that was that website turntable fm do you remember that from back in the day it was a sick website dude I don't know if it was turntable. Was there another really big website that was dot FM at that time? Uh, well, last FM. That's what I'm thinking of. Last. That's diff. Yeah, turntable was like this cool like chat room music website where you would have like five people up DJing, but they're like playing music from their laptop. I guess and there was just like chat rooms, like hip hop, whatever, fucking techno, jazz, this and that. And everyone could curate a room. And it was like crazy. You could upload music from your computer and just basically be up there like playing shit to people, chat about it, be like, yo, this is this, blah, 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 you know. And uh, I just got like super into that and like learned a lot of music from the rooms that I was like, I was in like two rooms consistently just on there talking to people, listening to what they had. Cool. And then I was when I was making beats, I would just like post, I would play them on there and be like, yo, blah, 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 I'm young as fuck compared to these guys that are like 30s, 40s in these like classic hip hop rooms and shit and uh, get feedback and just kind of do shit from there. And yeah. uh, the Stone's Throw Beat Battles too was a huge inspiration and knowledge boost for sure, you know? Yeah. That's listen right. to what people were doing there and like fucking i don't know just forcing myself to make a beat in a week and you know see what i can do with a random sample and shit that was a that was a game changer for sure dude yeah that's wild bro damn i just think about how beautifully powerful and informative the internet is the older i get like you take it for granted when you're growing up but like i was literally and you you yourself too like i learned so much about hip-hop like I wouldn't yeah. be, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like I wouldn't have all this shit up in here if I didn't spend, you know, grades nine through fucking twelve, just like two hours a day, pretty much at my computer, yeah. like looking up. Oh, like Native Tongues Posse, or like I like day, I like uh, Tribe Called Quest. You know, like an easy yeah. service level group to get in. Let me click on related acts in Wikipedia. Oh, what's the Native Tongues Posse? Oh, I've heard of De La Soul. Well, I've never heard of Jungle Brothers or who's like Chia Lee or like Moni Love. Oh my and, God, yeah. Yeah, it's just like it's, and then I would I do can't. it over, like over every fucking, you probably feel the same, like every day, like after school. Yeah. Either I'm doing shit with homies, doing my homework because I was an anxious, uh, like bookworm, or um, I'm stuck on my computer, like locked in for two hours straight, like staying up later than I should. I remember I was like doing music stuff and my mom would come down like at like one in the morning sometimes she'd be like, I'm like, I'm like worried about what you're looking at this late. I'm like, I'm literally on media fire, allegedly downloading yeah. fucking like old oh, yeah. uh, diggable planet. Album. Yeah. <laughs> allegedly. Like, I fucking need to wait for this to download. If it fails, I got to do it again tomorrow. Dude, like, you know, my mom had a laptop. And then when she opened it up and she connected to the internet, it would fuck my internet up sometimes. And I'd be yeah. like downloading shit and they're like, oh man, again, off topic. Fucking but... DSL days, man. Download so much music on shitty internet. And like, like you still have it mind, i bro. still have all that shit that like are not allegedly. all of it but allegedly, allegedly on an at a uh, secret secure location we don't even know what you're talking about all i yeah. know is the internet was hugely impactful yeah the fucking money oh i beat my papa in cribbage that's why i'm like why is this money oh what you took his money too yeah damn cold we're doing two statements shout out cold. the internet yeah you learned a lot from the internet we got to okay. close that topic so my mind can then move on to the next topic. This fell out of my pocket. My papa and I play cribbage. We play for money. Every game you win, you get a dollar. And if you skunk somebody, which is like you embarrassingly, embarrassingly beat them, you mm -hmm. get two bucks. So I, I played oh. three games. Three dollar. But my papa's winning in our I keep tally. We've probably been yeah. playing like hardcore for like two, three years. He's beating me 75 games to 48. He's abusing. He's abusing. Oof. But yeah. again, oh, here we go. He's he's beating me really bad. Segway, <laughs> the first beat. That was awful. I uh, <laughs> think I uh, seen you put online was we mentioned it. Willows on your Bandcamp. That's from 2012. Do you think that's the earliest Bizzo that's out there? 
No, dude, check my sound. Oh, maybe they're not on my SoundCloud I, anymore. Might have been private. I think I think they're private, bro. But maybe me, I was tripping. Maybe I looked in the wrong place. There, there's one beat that's like earlier than that. But for the or there's a couple part. beats. There's a couple beats that are earlier than that. Uh, that I made with one of those MPK mini keyboards. Oh shit! Fruit Loops back in the day and El Hora Dos. Those El, oh, they're El on my bank. Dos. Yeah, those yeah. are on SoundCloud, bro. You got a moldy they sandwich. Are on SoundCloud, that's nasty. So. Yeah, see, I have like a ton of shit on there that's not on these? my band what camp, dude. Fuck? I must have some been of those are, Some of those are fun to listen to. So I'll be like, damn, all right, I was doing something different. Like, I like the artwork cool. too a lot. <laughs> yeah, you, dude. You always have like consistent good out, um, artwork. Um, what was I going to talk about? Well, regardless, I guess it's like we're pretty much just talking about when you first started uploading. I wanted yeah. also to get the, the history behind your name. Is it a clear Wu Tang homage? I mean, kind of, yeah, because my friends called me that when we were like, that was just the nickname I inherited. Everyone just yeah. had some fucking nickname in our group, you know, and like, uh, because I listened to so much Wu-Tang. Yes, that's exactly what it was. All of it, too, like Wu-Tang and then Ghostface and Raekwon and fucking even had some, uh, uh, what's the guy? Fuck, dude. Cavadonna. I de- I didn't have a Capadonna album, but the uh, You God, oh, as you a You God so album, dude. Yeah, I can name them. It's a yeah. Meth Ray Ghost, Rizza Jizza, Inspect the Deck, yeah. You God, Master Killer, and ODB. I think that's all nine, right? Yeah, there's nine of I think them. That's it. And then there's yeah. um, Capadonna, who's like one of the unofficial ones. Papa Wu. Papa Wu, who's like the R.I.P. Oh yeah, I dead, I think. there's the Wu disciples it. and like the Killer Bees. Shaheem, um, he's Street Life, Street yeah. Life too. He dope. Um, Grave Diggers, which was RZA and like Rizzo's two other Paul. dudes. Yeah. Um, who else am I forgetting? There's someone big I'm forgetting. Oh, Red Man has always been kind of oh like Red Man special. Like yeah, because um, he was on um, the but... W album that had yeah. Gravel Pit on it. But um, man, but I yeah, think that, man, Wu Tang. There's just like some there's some groups, man. Like they're everywhere, right? In the zeitgeist, and then you remember why you're like, oh, like they're fucking amazing. Like, oh yeah, they did. Yeah, so how good Wu Tang is sometimes. Like that it feels weird to say, but like they literally are like astounding. Like, every fucking rapper, not every, a lot of rappers today are either trying to make Marsburg or only built for Cuban links. That's like what I hear a lot when I'm like listening to modern. Yeah, music. Cuban links was fire, dude. But Change don't. The game. Fl- don't forget about Ghostface, like this Iron Man. Supreme clientele yeah. and Iron Man. I listen to Supreme clientele so much, dude. That wow, was just was had fire. his birthday recently. Ghostface has the best discography, hands down, out of any Wu Tang member. I think he's the most sharp consistently throughout yeah. time because he is Definitely. like Iron Man and Supreme clientele both came out in the nineties. I think I could be tripping, but I think they both came out. I think in the Supreme 90s. clientele was like early two thousand. That was ninety nine or two thousand. Was maybe, it okay? Maybe, Maybe it was 2000, but I thought that was like mostly recorded in like the late 90s. That would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. But I could, dude, I've been wrong so many fucking times. (laughs) Yeah, it came out February 8th, 2000. So it was recorded 98, 99. So that really came out like turn of the century. So, but then you look at what else he has in his discography. He dropped Fish Scale in the 2000s, one of his best albums, hands down, in my opinion. Yeah, Fish Scale is crazy good because it has just stupid fucking production. Like some of the, yeah. product, I think Dilla is on that. I think Doom's on that. Um, Alchemist for sure, I think has a beat on that. Yeah, dude, listen to this. Just Blaze, MF Doom, Jay Dilla, Pete Rock, Sean C and LV, Cool and Dre. Like, are you kidding me? Like, damn, dude. Like, dude, even like Doom, Just Blaze, Dilla, Pete Rock. Yeah, that's crazy, man. The shit was <laughs> wild, Ben, man. Like, god damn. That's just some heavy hitters still. Still heavy, like yeah. heavy, heavy. And then you have Pretty Tony album. I liked a lot, bro. Like, I think that's a great album too. It has um run on it. Like, come on, bro. Like it's one of the best fucking oh, that's fire, dude. That yeah, but, uh, there was like a sweet like bootleg Beatles Wu Tang collab. Did you ever get that album back in the day? It was like enter yes. the enter the magical mystery tour, dude. The run bootleg on that is a sick fucking dude, you are that's dude. sick oh my god i, I actually like that one better than the other one so long yo dude, dude. i know me neither it's one of those things that just fucking 
popped in. Holy, there's dude. some fucking sweet tracks on that I've album been, though, yeah, dude. Into the magical mystery. Who did Channel. that? Someone like it wasn't like a shitty bootleg. It was some dude that was doing those for a little bit. Looking this up, I forgot. There was two of them, two albums that he did like oh. that, and the second one wasn't. Yeah. Enter the Magical Mystery Chambers. Excuse me. That's yeah. what it's called. I got to play this run thing real quick. I forget. Is it? It's not come together, is it? Oh, my God. Yeah. It is. No, 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 no. We're stopping. That's too hard. That's too wow. Hard. That's I think that's better than the original. I'm gonna say. It's, it's recorded live. It's Whew. it's. I'm See, shit like that. I was listening to so much music, dude. I was just like, everything was an influence to make beats, man. I was just like, there's so much dope shit. I want to do this. Like, so much, bro. I was super oh. into it, too. And I was like, I'm really involved in this. And I'm not going to rap. So <laughs> I'm going to uh, make beats. So, like, fuck it. Dude. All right. My brain's telling me to wrap up something. Oh, yeah. Van Gogh's face also for other albums, bro. Mm. Um. 12 Reasons to Die. He dropped that like in the... Oh, Adrian day. Young. That's incredible, yeah. too. And shout out Adrian Young, because I was watching Black Dynamite the other day, and I forgot how good that <laughs> movie is. And I think, yeah. Adrian, I think Adrian Young did the fucking soundtrack for that shit, too, bro. I think he did, yeah. And they don't have... Let me see. Yeah, he did Black Dynamite. Yeah. Wow, that's wild, bro. Damn, but back to you, man. Oh, yeah. Shout out Ghostface Killer. Shout out Wu-Tang Clan. Shout out yep. you being a big fan. That way, you ended up getting the name Bizza at the time when your homies and you were getting into this kind of culture and then yeah. you started dropping beats like you were steady dropping beats the kind of throughout the 2010s like slowly on soundcloud it looks like correct yeah pretty much dude it was like that era of, like it was it was pretty cool still dropping everything i made it was like that was what i was gonna do everything. i had no concept of a tape yeah so that literally is like every good beat that i made at that time like there's no real you delete the rest in there. or like have you kept everything up it's all i think it's all up there might be some private ones that were like trash that i went back and listened to or like this i'm not but i didn't delete it i just put it private because i was like i don't know if i still have these i think they're somewhere on my computer but yeah hell yeah it's cool sometimes to look through and be like damn and then was i was the, like oh, i want to make tapes was the visit tape in 2017 <laughs> like the self-titled one was that your first one no, there was another one that was before that. I think I think it was when I was in my whole uh, Star Wars uh, phase there, yep. and I was like, uh, "Is a Juan Kenobi or something?" Was like the it's name the I was internet? going with. I couldn't find that. I don't think it's on the internet anymore. That's something I have tucked away. I yeah, that there. one. That one, I just, I shelved that one, dude. Yeah, we, distributors told me to take it off the shelves. It wasn't fucking safe. Hey, man, anymore. be like that. They didn't like it. They pulled it back. But <laughs> no, like the, the self title was like the first one. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to put something out. And I've oh! taken a really long break. Yeah, the GoPro's back, dude. Dude, what the she fuck back? happened? We're fixing this. We're back, Jack. We're going to fix that in the meantime. Yeah, because that was in 2017 when you dropped that one, right, yo? yeah 2017 that sounds when, right when did you move to portland from bangor uh 20 was it 2018 maybe yeah 2018 Sweet. sounds about Sweet. right so I that's think, I, yeah. wanted, I wanted to move on to this time period in your life because this is a huge time for you man you dropped two b tapes that are very impressive in 2017 correct thanks man yeah yeah i think well one was 20 were they both 2017 i thought they, on yeah. the grand camp they both are i think yeah I could, yeah that's right be. No, you're right. Yeah. On some grass and the self-titled one. Exactly. Yeah. But on some grass is, I think, one word, right? Yeah. And um, anybody at home, go to Business Bandcamp and definitely check those out. I was playing the fucking beat to, um, it's like a comic store, uh, Newberry. Is that one of the beats on Newberry? Oh, yeah. The yeah. last track on the self-titled. Bro, that's fucking crazy. Like, I was playing that. I'm like, Business making this kind of shit in 2017? It's like four to years be ago. Honest, I don't even remember what that beat is off the off the name alone. <laughs> I don't even remember. Making me pull it out, and I can only play this because it's your music. Yeah, um, dude, this shit is hard, bro. Like my, my, my I actually posted the song on Twitter today because I was like, it's hard. Damn. Like Thanks, I was, bro. I was impressed, bro. 
Like, and I love the license plate. I didn't even know how to mix back then. I didn't even understand you, the concept you're, of you're, mixing. You're, you're like messing with sounds and soul samples. Oh, this is this crazy. Is like... But I want to hear the drums kick in. Like, you have some wild distortion. Oh man, dude. that's crazy, bro. That's drums. <laughs> yeah, dude. Come on. I remember that now. That's hard. That's hard as fuck. Damn. Thanks for that trip, dude. It was a good trip down memory lane. Man, I got I got I got off. I, I get fucking sidetracked. See what happens? I'm supposed <laughs> to the camera and you got me playing your beats. I'm literally like getting lost on your band camp, playing your beats, interviewing you. I am that's I how am deep I'm in this music shit. You want you want receipts? They're right here in front of you, bro. I cannot <laughs> take the funk. Um <laughs> GoPro's fixed. Say la vie. And let's talk about as 2017 kind of turned because, again, those fucking projects were really dope. And I think they really showed the area that, like, yo, like, you serious, bro? And um, you then moved to Portland in 2018. So I want to kind of just what, – what was your mind state like at this time? Like, what, was, uh, what were your goals? Were you just trying to create and be around a scene? Were you trying to, like, do anything concretely? Or were you just creating and kind of flowing? Yeah, I think at that time, it was mostly, like, wanted to be in a scene where there was people at and, you know, really, like, shows happening and the possibility of seeing a different show or a dope show or a possibly big name, you know, just, I was going to Portland before, like, down, you know, day trip, night trip, whatever. Yeah. So, I was like, this is dope. Like, I want to be around this, you know, um, and, like, kind of at the time gary and i were super into making those tapes making tapes for creation pattern which we're still doing we just have oh, yeah, been a little you and gary had back. been kind of relinked up bruv you and gary had, though had linked up again like by that time in bangor right oh yeah we were chilling and gary had moved to like westbrook i think before like a year yeah. or so before and he's older than <laughs> yeah that makes sense. so uh i'd come and seen him and shit we were doing the tapes and you know, I wanted to move down and like pursue that some more. And then, uh, yeah, that was really the goal when I moved here, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Resample so, just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, that's my next thing. Cause for those who don't know at home, um, creation pattern is pretty much like a record label, right? That you and, um, yeah. Gary or you and bruv run. Yeah. We just, yeah, we do, uh, we do cassette tape releases for people. So mm-hmm for ourselves too we oh, kind of just self fuzzy yep. bunny flippers i think you did some for right yeah we did i we don't have it in the catalog but we did that that's like a weird uh unofficial official that's yeah. rare that's fuzzy a rare gem dude oh yo i got some yeah shit. yeah he's fucking sweet dude he's doing a lot of cool shit but yeah, yeah. a dude named fuzzy just look up fuzzy's beats like just at all right UI, he dope as fuck too but um all right Creation Pattern is a tape label that um, Brub and Biza run. I got um, Nourishment, I think, from that, right? Was Nourishment? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got it somewhere over there. I got my stack. This Hold on. Are we, are we doing this right now? I mean, I'm not going to flex, but I got some crazy shit to be honest, bro. Where is it? I think bro? there's still some of these tapes. Oh, you don't even have it out yet, bro? Oh, you got so much. That's why. I tell you, game's getting beefed up, bro. Dude, yep, we got it right here, bro. You go. Hey, nice. Hey, Crown, nice. if you're watching, you homies got your back. We're shouting it out, spend. dude. I think you can still buy them. We'll cop it right now. This is a fucking I'm pretty sure amazing you can tape. Still fucking buy them. Amazing tape. I'm gonna flex real quick though for the people at home. I got it's still on my fucking uh cassette tape player. I have a rap Ferreira um Ooh. tape that was only put out on physical. It's not on the internet anywhere. That's sick. And it's beautiful. Like this is so beautiful. That's a package, bro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my like, I mean, uh, this is the last Milo album, um, budding ornithologists yeah. are weary of tired analogies. Um yeah. amazing, but it has like the cool cover. This is right from Rory, bro. This is this is like one of the, my most prized possessions. A sealed so the flies don't come. Kenny Siegel and Milo Ooh. tape. Yeah. I'm just going to keep bragging. I'm sorry, bro. I have to do this. No, dude. Let's see the collection. Sign. This is like a third of it, too. A signed pink navel born on the stairs. Ooh. 
Shout out Those guys him. that are putting out, they all put out so much shit, man. Legends. Yeah. Straight up, bro. Yeah, dude. Rory's a fucking yeah, he's a cool dude, man. Like that. Those uh soul folks beat invitationals they yeah. did. Another one, tight. yeah. Two Bay suburb, bro. Yeah. In cassette. I mean home was home just come on, he's a homie. Too good of a person. Yeah. And then we got a uh, 90 shit. Out. Rest of development and public Ooh, enemy. Damn. Giraffe track. Deb. Pink Naval. And then look at this shit, bro. Is that that Nightwork shit? Oh, yeah. volume one. Nice, dude. Isn't that crazy, bro? I think, That's sick. I think Luke's on this. Yeah, Luke is on that one. Is He's on both of them, I think. He's he on is, volume no, He's two. definitely on both. <laughs> he's got leaves blown on the first one. You're on the second one, right? I'm on the second one, yeah. The Beat Don't Stop Part 2, Bandcamp. Go buy it, you motherfuckers. Um, yeah. Like, there's some absolutely wild songs. Listen, dude, there's a Ra Zen Brain Orchestra in Foise song on this song, on this tape. Holy fuck, dude. E1. Guys... Vinyl oh, Vision. Dude, yo, shout out, dude. E1, man. With the Light Friends. Dude, one has two on this. He's got Tall Grass yeah. and Crossed Up. All right. Once again, at Benny's crib, we got <laughs> off topic. But <laughs> the point of this was to say, Creation Creation Pattern is a dope label, putting out tapes. Shout out y'all on that. I love that you were dropping steady in 2017. You were linking up with Bruv again. Bruv's kind of more in the Portland area. And you're like, yeah. move on down in 2018, because 2018 was a very monumental year, not only for yourself, um, but for resample and for the whole hip hop scene in Portland and the whole beat scene of Maine and New England, in my opinion, because resample started yeah, I think, in, in the end of 2018, right? Yeah, so or like officially, but we were, I think we started doing those shows. Well, Dave had already done a few shows before I did a show with them. Yeah. I think I was at like the third or fourth one, maybe that Dave had hosted. And it was uh, like June of that year. Which was tight, dude. Yeah. There were some underground ones. I mean, fucking uh, Rory and all those dudes came and played like our third one ever and to an empty room. But it was sick. <laughs> it was tight, man. It was weird, but so it was a good yeah. time, man. Yeah. So beautiful. Um, yeah. Let's get into the earlier shows of Resample, though, when you kind of start to have, you know, more of like a setting and consistent, you know, regulars and kind of like a theme uh what were those early early shows like man like what was kind of like once you started to get the ball rolling what was it like to be there dude it was great man it was like life-changing dude like having shows like that was sick or i guess i mean that was just exactly what i was down to do but i didn't know i was gonna be involved in the show itself like doing mm -hmm. something like that it's more like looking for a place to play. And that was just like, oh, okay, like we're going to do something. This is fucking sick, man. Like, all right. So being behind the scenes of that, it's like pretty fun. I enjoyed it a lot and enjoy it a lot. It's not over. Like we're just, uh, just taking a nap, you know, doing our shit. But yeah, the early days, man, it was like, oh, when we had like the first room where it was like packed. Oh my God, that was so crazy. I don't remember what show that was. It definitely was, I think it was like, one that goddamn Chan had played at. Yeah. Where we like really sure packed. It was like them. Mozart and French and Chan were mm. there. Y'all all y'all like playing at the same time, I think. Maybe, maybe yeah. Pro I don't dude, yeah. Pro I think there was definitely mm. sometimes some jam, yeah, some jam sessions in there. I remember like a uh fucking scratch session at the end of one night because Jake had his turn. Roach Dad had his turntables. It was just everyone was getting up there, like, "Oh shit, all right." Like, yeah, Chan was. That was a Chan night too. Yeah, but those were great, Roach man. Oh, I gotta get Roach Dad on here too, and then I'll have the Alter G trilogy completed. Oh yeah, so yeah dude. Bright Boy and I. Oh my god, Teal Child. Yo, I saw one of the best. You know how? What was it like? Megan The Stallion made Hot Girl Summer like a couple summers ago, and then have you seen Tom Hanks' dumbass son? chet hanks he's like called it a white boy summer this summer yes this so yeah fun. that's just stupid to me like I, you don't need to do that but bright boy was like fuck that it's it's a bright boy summer and i'm like yeah i like that it's yeah, bright that boy was, summer all fucking year bro that was sick I yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so shout out bright boy and roach dad i see you you're on my list yeah. but say la vie i'm glad those early memories 
captivated you because the growth that Resample saw as a community into 2019 and throughout 2019, astounding, in my, in my, in my opinion. Um, the yes, dominant establishment of this is a fucking scene, give us respect, is already established then at this point. Then above that, it's not only do we have a scene out here, we're showcasing this scene visually, auditorily. I think that's the how you pronounce that, <laughs> whatever that sound is. Yeah. And just like we're actually being here for our community. Like we're out here on Forest. We out here getting crown fried chicken. We out here smoking <sighs> at the venue, allegedly. We out here bringing people in. We out here donating money. It's real. Like it really felt like community. It wasn't some bullshit. Not sound like a dick, but it wasn't some bullshit like space gallery thing or something like that. <laughs> Damn, shots fired. Hey, I don't care, bro. Like <laughs> I'm about community. That's it, bro. And space, like, yeah. uh, like has put on good shows. I just, I don't know. I just feel like they're kind of like this is this is different. Like, like it doesn't feel as like again. Maybe I'm talking shit. What do I know? I'm just like out here every fucking day, living out here. But it feels like you know, like Sun Tea, like really, like those at least those resample shows that felt like community like i could feel that like everyone had each other's back that we were all here out of love for the culture and no one's faking the funk and if someone is we just let them mind their business over there because we're too busy having the time of our lives over here and that's yeah, how that's pretty good. Felt. yeah yeah man yeah i appreciate that that's dope no, that's like, exactly what we're going for i, I think I, some some of those times were definitely some of the best like oh, best man. shows the early on but I mean, we did some cool shows it's like fucking Geno's. I got the poster up here, man. Like, yeah, we got, we got to play at Geno's like before this new owner and shit. And like, that was that was nuts, dude. Nobody had done shit like that there. So dope, bro. Yeah, you know, Geno's is like Geno's rock. Not a hip hop vibe, though. Not no. at all. No, no, it's a dope spot, though. Yeah, Super that's kind of like, again, like, a com- like for the hardcore scene, that kind of has that like community ground up feel, too. I feel like. Hell yeah that i remember the matthews fest was super sick up on top of matthews pub did you go to that no oh, that dude, was you get, sick you gave me jelly don't even i don't even want to hear about this <laughs> those full. little ones sometimes here and there were fucking ah, those were so sick dude yeah but yeah. regardless i mean what was going on within y'all you you said hey we're here and then resample broadcasted that it was i mean dave fiver knocks it out the park with the visuals that sense of community is so there and then not only were you putting on for like our area, you're like, let's bring some motherfuckers in from outside. Yeah. I mean, the Nightworks connection, like that was one of the best nights of my life, bro. Daedalus, Razen, Kadeem, like Kadeem's rapping like this close to me. I'm like, the fuck, bro? Yeah. Like, and then obviously the Freddie Stone connect. Shout out okay. Freddie Stone. I think he's having a baby tonight. So, oh, it's a nice yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I gave Freddie a bunch of free shit when he was over out of love, and he's like, "I'm gonna send you a nice food shirt." I don't think he did, bro. I'm just well, no, no. Hey, <laughs> I just like to make sure that we put our statements out in the air because we got to be backing up our words. But I'm just giving probably it. come. It's coming after the kid, exactly. For sure, I'm just, I'm just giving. Yeah, it. I'm, just giving <laughs> it. I'm just. I'm breaking balls, but uh, um, yeah, I love Freddie Stone. No, oh, yeah, the, he's having that. Yeah, congrats, congrats, congrats on man. Yeah, um, sick. And then E1, of course. So I'm getting off topic again. That's what happens. I didn't smoke before this, too. So that shows you how fucking wild my brain is. Yeah. Um, but just, I feel like, just as E1. a fan, yeah. 2019 was huge, bro, for resample. Is there anything you want to talk about that year? Because that was the last, like, full year y'all were open as a, as a um, event. And I just want to he- hear it from someone who's from behind the scenes. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, I mean, that that the Daedalus thing was pretty crazy. That was, like, put together by nightworks which was super sick and i got to play at nightworks actually that year too which was really tight with obliv that was a really random like they just hit me up <laughs> and he was like uh razam he was like yo uh, we got obliv playing the next nightworks he like messaged me i was like oh word dude that's dope you got tickets available already and he was like yeah but you want to just play and i was like uh yeah i guess dude like fuck yeah this, definitely this one of the best producers of all time <laughs> yeah i was like i'll play that show that was had a bunch of heads on it dude like radicule and moretta 13 p.m like all these like random people from around the you know boston area and other states and shit kadeem i think probably did some shit he was MC. i know brain like, has been there multiple times too Brain. yeah yeah so 
I mean, that was a huge highlight for sure. And then having Daedalus come here and I mean, just in general, like uh, just those were, it was super fun doing that shit all the time, you know, like just Dave's visuals are, were really like the, to me, that's my highlight. Like the music's sick and I'm, I forget about who played sometimes because I was in such a moment of everything else, you know, like mm -hmm. I spent some time behind there hanging, just watching, like, you know, I was at every point, you know, I was getting vantage points every day behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was fucking sweet though, man, but we're gonna, we'll be back. We'll be back. Sure. We got some shit coming, you know, I love it. I'm always here. Ryan Beat is always here for reasons. Yeah. You know, if you need uh, security, if you need vibes, weed, allegedly. Got it. I think, you know. yeah. But, uh, what else? Yeah, we need that fire, dude. You need to come through. <laughs> allegedly, man. <laughs> but, yeah, man. Ah. Just, I can't even think about resample because it gets me so excited. I mean, this is like on my desk. I mean, dude, that's, you gotta cut, you gotta, you gotta, uh, Come through. I'm gonna send you that invite to your right. Discord. That fucking DVD though. Yeah, fuck. Did you play it yet or what? Yeah, sure. <laughs> We're moving on. I got dude. The laptop that has a disk drive is fucked. That's a long story. We're figuring it out. We have these speed bumps that we <laughs> gotta get through though in life. Segway, because in 2020, but right before the pandemic really started to go crazy crazy, you dropped a dope ass beat tape. Yeah. And that was, yeah. That was called Speed Bumps. Um, I love that tape. I just want to hear like what motivated that tape. You know, what was you know your intentions at the time? Because I think that's a really fucking tremendous uh LP, man, for real. I just like hadn't done anything with that, like with music in so long. So I had just uh um I don't know, I just gotten out of a relationship and I was like, cool, I'm going to channel all this energy into making some music and like put it out and devote, devote my energy to doing that. And so I did and just was like, I want to, I had, like I said, hadn't put anything out for a while. I was like, I've been making some different shit. We hadn't had a resample show in a minute, kind of. I think we had one, the first one in 2020. Um, and I was like, I've, been, I've had, I've been stacking so many beats. I was like, I need to, I need to like, you know, fucking put some shit out, get it out there. I was I'm just like, it needs to go out. I need to get rid of it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's still good too, man. Like I really, again, go. Thanks. Yeah. Bandcamp and buy it. We're going Spotify and stream it, but speed bumps. So dope. I mean, it's barely like a year old. It's still pretty fresh in the zeitgeist of music, in my opinion. Fuck streaming Instagram Thanks, yeah. culture. Because like, if you drop an album every like three, four years, that's a good pace. I don't give a fuck. If they're good, I don't give a fuck. Like, it's hard to put out yeah. timeless music. And to me, I'll be playing Speed Bones forever, bro. That's like backyard, you know, Hell yeah. in the future. Like, yo, come over, man. I'm grilling up. We got vibes all day. I'm playing beat tapes all day. Let's come through. You know, fuck yeah. Speed Bones is going to be on there. Oh, oh, native yeah. main produce is gonna be on there, you know. Nourishment yeah. is gonna be on there. Yeah. Uh, soil works is gonna be on there. Whatever, man. I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just blowing up all the homies. But uh, no, that was the first one I really thought about, like mixing or making sound good and like putting tracks in an order, not just being like this is a beat tape. Here's the beats, like yeah. you know. The cover too. So, I like the album cover a lot. Cool. Yeah, I took that picture at uh, the Western Front. Hell yeah! In the winter, <laughs> some <laughs> shitty ass snow. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. shout out uh, nourishment. No, oh, I'm tripping. Shout out speed bumps. Excuse me, but I think nourishment came up close to the same time, so maybe I'm not that tripping. But um, shout out speed bumps. It did. Yeah, actually. Okay. I think, yeah. My brain is fucked, bro. I'm surprised I even had this much linear flow into my interview. <laughs> it's like a fucking electron cloud of information. But uh, speed bumps is tremendous. Business is tremendous. Let's Thanks, keep going. Man. What's your process as a producer? Is it a consistent one or is it kind of vary? Uh, it comes in waves of consistent processes, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like, like I'm back making beats on my 1000, especially with doing the beat battles again lately, because it's like, 
I'm just like, you know what? I'll kind of want to go back to that. Like I fixed it up a little bit recently, got the new pads and everything. So I was like, all right, I'm going to use this again. I've been making dope shit. And I was like, why was I thinking about shit so much on? Because before that, I was going through a little phase of Serato sample and a MIDI keyboard. Because I was like, well, this is fucking dope. This is super easy. My pads are dying on my MPC. Like, I'm going to just, you know, make some beats like this. And I made a bunch of dope beats. A bunch of those beats on speed bumps are from that. Some other unreleased shit is just MIDI keyboard, Serato sample, addictive drums you know shit like that and uh but i don't know and i was like fuck it i'm just gonna go back to the 1000 because shit sounds better coming off of it honestly (laughs) dude so now it's just dial in get a sample loaded up chop it let's go make some shit you know if not move on to the next thing quick it's quick yeah i don't spend a lot a lot of time lately just fucking churning them out you know i like it fix it later if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. Tremendous. Shout out Kadeem, too. You had the first joint on Passing Exchange last year, and that probably came through um, Resample, I imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that was when we when they did that show there. We were finally like, he was like, yo, you got to send me some of these beats, man. You got to send me some of these beats. And then I sent him over a pack of beats and that was one that i just made like lately and uh yeah he he was like yep that's the one i was like dope that's the one i was hoping you chose out of all those and perfect it came out fucking good dude that's dude that's the it's the intro i know i was like i was like damn man thanks like that's that's huge like Kadeem's big, just, dude and kadeem is like really well respected out here like across the country yeah, like probably like, globally like, I don't even, I don't, like, seek out people to rap on my shit. I'm not, like, that type of, that type of dude. Like, I'm not, like, oh, I'm, yo, you need beats, you need beats. Just a select few people that I will, I've, hit, there's two people, actually, that I've hit up and been, like, I'll send, do you want beats? I'll send you beats. It's Kadeem and Freddie Stone. It's two people that I'm, like, yep, I'll, I'll definitely give you beats. And, uh, yeah, Kadeem fucking killed it on that shit, dude. Totally. I was blessed to be track one the video oh the video that goes with that beat is so sick i don't think have you not seen that oh that the video for that beat is fucking dope dude i gotta check it out man i mean if the home i especially gotta check it out yeah Um, well yeah i guess thank you for talking about that because that was pretty much me wrapping up your 2020 in a sense um because now i want to talk about kind of the future talk about maybe what you've been working on um but before that you down for some rapid fire yeah let's do it too all right i love this yeah hey let's get it do you remember you've had this before um all right you know what i did too i did something pretty wild i i haven't been creatively improvising enough in my life i'm getting kind of like stagnant with my energy that's just like my self-awareness telling myself that so i only wrote two rapid fire questions and i'm gonna have to pretty much like freestyle Ooh, I like um, that. So here we go. I'm going to start right. with you, and then it's just going to be say la vie. What's your favorite recipe to, like, create or bake? Uh, any, pasta, any pasta dish, man. Favorite pasta dish? Ooh, chicken parm. Homemade. All homemade. Sauce, all chicken, homemade. everything. From homemade. scratch? Not the pasta, probably, but the rest. The sauce, at least. Yeah, you're not, you're not fucking... Yeah. Drying out bread and putting flour and whatever the fuck out. Oh, I'm bread the chicken. Oh, I'm no, fucking no, bread. But chicken. now I'm doing. Oh, not doing the pasta. Yeah, because isn't pasta like bread that you fucking? Yeah. Put with like some wheat and the flour, water and flour and whatever. Yeah. I'm getting way off topic here. Just. Oh, actually, that wasn't. I had another one right now. I, I freestyled in the middle of those two. I got. I got so excited <laughs> for your pasta answer. I was like, I have to know. What pasta is your favorite? All right, here's the last written one, and then we freestyle, bro. All right. The producer that blows your mind, Mad Blue, Dream Car, uh, Toyota Tacoma, Bob. Yeah, <laughs> what? Let's go, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, my is dreams are low, man. I said, yeah, fuck yeah, Give me a truck, man. I already drive a WRX. I'm good. Oh yeah, you've oh. I already got. 
already got what I needed out of That's that. That's crazy. You out here fucking time for truck life, here. my dude. Yeah. Um, if you could visit any mountain, what mountain would it be? Mount Washington. That's like the closest one. You wouldn't go to like a oh a visit. You say visit? Yeah. Oh fuck, dude. Uh, what are you going to New Hampshire for? You're not going to Kilimanjaro or whatever. I thought you said, I thought you said some other shit. Uh, what do you think yeah, I said? Dude. I thought you said B. You <laughs> could be any mountain. I want to be fucking Mount Washington, bro. <laughs> I did fucking smoke before be this interview. Mount. I should be Mount Washington, hundred percent. No, I probably Mount Fuji, dude. Shit's dope. Yeah. That's cool. That is a cool one. Yeah. Um. Uh oh. Where does an album or artist that makes you think of your childhood? Uh. Dude, Gangstar, fucking, um, uh, the, the full clip one, the legacy one, the that platinum Spitz. one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's an astounding album. Astounding album. What's a goal you still have? Um, dude, buy some land out in the cut, just fucking, you know. Build, man. Good Build. goal. Yeah. Buy property. Yeah. That's just, that's not going to be there forever. Least favorite household chore. Dude, clean the bathroom all day. Oh, yeah. That one sucks, bro. I don't like that. That's terrible. This is na- Especially like you live with multiple people. So you got multiple people making the bathroom trips. I live with one person, bro. Yeah. Keep a pretty you, clean bathroom. Gonna- that's right. We got two at least. So that's tight. You got to clean two. Toilets. Well, we got two bathrooms to so split the difference. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah. All right, I'm keeping. I got to keep the freestyle going. Yeah. What album from this year has kind of resonated with you? Uh, what's that? Uh, pick that. Um, Alchemist, like Boldy James album was that this year was no 2020 the, the price, uh, 2020 the price of tea in china came out in 2020 but alchemist What's some shit that, he, this year yeah dude that one's fire that one that he just put out is really good so good stupid yeah stupid. i'm trying to think because it's hard for out like i've just been listening to all his new shit all 2021 dude yeah that's a great answer oh video tweaking out we're fixing it we'll oh, back. Fuck. oh fuck fuck <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have fun, don't we? All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck I swear, bro. Hey, GoPro, I got beef with you. Your shit's unreliable, man. It's always like herky <laughs> jerky. Donate some shit to me at this point. Come on. All right. Yeah, give this man a free GoPro. Give me a fucking sample. Yardy Ting is a great sponsor. They're always promoting me. They always I know. GoPro. If you want to be, actually, I wouldn't take any like major capitalistic sponsors. What I probably would do is I take the free shit and I'd be like, yeah, there's a chance I might like promote you, but then I just wouldn't. And that'd be like my burnt bridge. Cause it's like, fuck this yeah. yeah. Regardless, um, I did not turn this off again and do this again, but Hey, that's cool. Back to the rapid fire. What is your favorite biosphere? What the fuck is that? Um, biosphere? A biosphere is a type of environment referring to the nature that composes it meaning like oh a temperate forest tundra desert yeah ocean you know the different mediums of nature for the most part uh a, a nice forest definitely a mountainous forest yeah mountainous forest i like yeah that. you know yeah water if you could collab and like do an ep with any artist or group who would it be Griselda, man. It'd be hard. Yeah, dude, that'd be some shit. I like I don't think I'd make that kind of like, I'm not hard. That. <laughs> no, but dude, Griselda doesn't always that's the thing. Griselda like has all these like gritty street beats. Dude, some of the best shit is when Derringer just chops the fucking sample. And it's like Yeah. Like um the song R.I.P. Bobby. Have you heard that? I don't know. I dude, don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to out. so stupid. Yeah. I think it's one of the I think it's on one of the Hitler albums. Hitler wears oh, word. five, not five. Maybe it is five. Four. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Whatever. Last rapid fire. If you could travel to 
any time period that's like based in hip hop, you know, like 80s golden age or like, you know, early 2000s LA, like, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like mm. what, what era and time or what era time period and like location geographically would you go? Probably 90s New York. Mm. Like wherever the fuck Stretch and Bobito were, I want to be right there because those dudes. That's dude. That's that's, that's kind of where I want to be from Maine, man. Like, that's, yeah, that's such a great fucking answer. I was thinking like I want to be in the early two thousands, Stones Throw LA scene and watching like uh, mm. Mad Lib and Doom, like Crate Dig and get tacos and shit. And um, yeah, that would be that's def- that's tough right there. I probably picked what, that I, what I said first it was the first that came to mind, but what you're saying is, yeah, that's uh, hanging with those guys would be fucking insane, too. Hey, they're both good. Well, eating good. some mushrooms with Mad Lib, dude, just Stop. getting just, weird. You can't, you can't put these ideas in my head. <laughs> gets, me too, gets me too excited, bro. Um, well, good thing you passed the rapid fire. How did I do? I think I did pretty good making up questions on the spot. That was good. That was good. Yeah. yeah. I, I like suck at answering them fast, though. So. Yeah, I'm just like, chilling. You're like, really like assertive. I feel like you're the interviewer. I feel like I'm just sitting here. You're like, I'm wondering why I called you in today. <laughs> we'll talk after this. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> all right, yo. Let's get back to the present. I talked about 2021. Is there anything that you've been involved in, working on, or is there anything you want to kind of promote right now? Yeah, dude. The fucking Discord beat battles that we've been doing have been wild, like, crazy it, or i i should say that that's overstating it but they've been dope they've been real dope uh we got a bunch of people coming through making beats we're doing weekly beat battles uh just for fun man just like get people creating again and talking and shit because we had all these people that we played shows with that we just hadn't seen in forever and other random people yeah. from the internet that we know about and know through beats and all that shit so um yeah we're inviting people to come through that i mean there's i think there's a get that link i think it's a uh, public on the on our twitter and uh i think it's on the instagram too in the bio i think what's it's the, the um there. the name of the of these pages uh at it's just resample and resample on instagram and twitter yeah that's it oh it's resample. the resample pages yeah yeah got you <laughs> I think it's just reset. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. like a separate Discord page, and I was like, how the fuck am I not tapped into? No, you get the link. You can get the link. It's public on those, or, yeah. you know, I sent I got to jump in that. I've been slipping that I haven't been doing that, to be straight. It's dope, man. Wait. Uh, hold on here. Let me nope. pull it up. Let me screen share. We should show the viewers real quick. Oh, we'll show little, the viewers, we'll dude. Taste, right? Do I have to do anything to allow you to screen share? I think, uh, no, I think. I just dragged this. Tremendous. All the podcasts. Listening. Oh, you disabled it. Yeah, but you, if oh. you enable it, then I can uh, I'm pop in. Uh, try now. Oh, wait, hold up. You got it. Perfect. Podcast that. people, we are fixing settings. So we can see something visually. And again, like I said, if you're like, why, what's going on? You got to watch the podcast on video, on YouTube. We got audio and visual, yo. And now we're there sharing we the screen. And now we're yeah, seeing dude. the resample beat battles discord. We got it going on. And we got some peeps in here, you know. Just... Is, is that Mike B? Booze Lee? Oh, yeah. You know it, dude. He's, he's through. He's in here. Mike B out in this motherfucker? We got Mike B, dude. Yep. I see Crab Man. I see Jay Wisdom. Yep, Jay Wisdom. I see Mo. I see Freddie. Dave comes in sometimes. Yep. Uh, Andy from Moody Lords. I don't know. I don't know if I should blow everybody up in here, but (laughs) we got some pizza. Too too late, bro. It's on. I know. (laughs) Yeah, we got one. One pound's in here. You know that'll bring. You know that'll bring some people in, but you know. uh, Resample beat battles. Check them out. Twitter and Instagram should have the Discord link. You know, I'm going to be checking it out because this shit looks yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Sweet. Well, check that out. Um, obviously, this pandemic has made life really hard. I don't like to focus on the negatives, though. 
what's a grounding practice or technique or maybe like a healthy habit that you've picked up throughout this time um, that's been, you know, beneficial to you? Can you think of anything? Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, the thing that comes to mind, man, you know, me and me and my roommates, we just, we, we try to make family dinners at least once a week, dude. And that's just, that's good for mental health, man. Especially yeah. if you're living with people. Like, you guys, like, I love all y'all. Like, your house, like, I just, whenever I oh. visit, like, I just. I'm so like, happy yeah. Like, y'all, yeah, to live really... where I live. But that's huge, man. Yeah, like, like enjoy that time with your, with people that you live with and shit. And cooking for each other is, like, that's fucking dope. And so sick, dude, you know? I've been lucky to have a couple meals with y'all. And, uh, yeah. Fucking steak tips. And we go hard, dude, and... on the grill. And mill the highlights, and I'm bringing fucking weed over, and it's just this yeah. cats and this records. Who can, how could you have a bad time? All right, but shout out yeah. to health or mental health through family dinners, taking care of one yeah. another and taking care of the body. I love that. Yo. Yeah. You want to plug your social medias as we start to unwind and wrap this up? Yeah, at biz on Instagram with two underscores, I think, after it. Uh, and resamples twitter at resample uh yeah i don't really i'm not on much other social media other than that <laughs> i keep it uh band camp you know band camp and uh soundcloud too and then creation pattern as well creation pattern yeah we got that uh spotify we got that yeah. too yeah well ben biza my friend i'm pretty much here at the last question if you have anything else you want to say uh dude i don't know just shout out this uh, the whole community man shout out for you having me on here i mean the 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 uh spider web is crazy of how many people you know we've met through this and I, that's how i met who i'm living with right now you know like through this community and shit and it's like changed my life so it's still yeah shout out to all you guys well, yeah, yeah making it happen man shout yeah. out to scene, you know there actually are a lot of beautiful people out here in this little hip-hop scene Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's why i do i mean i said it so many times but this is why i do what i do like it's not just like oh hey this guy's got dope music it's like whoa like there's some really nice people who are yeah, learning dude. life skills and are like being <laughs> funny with one another and are sharing hobbies and interests and in art but we're also our own people and our own artists and we all appreciate that and i think that's just i mean dude it's just so cool like when you look around it's like oh like there's you know like a graphic designer there's a journalist, there's a producer, there's a visual arts guy, there's an MC, and you're all just chilling like in the same room and you would have yeah. no clue because you're just all just like homies and you're and you're hanging out. So yeah, dude. This is such Seriously. a cool thing. Shout out to people. I, I, shout I, out people. Shout out Dave, especially. Fiverr. Yeah, shout he's out Fiverr. Who, he's really, yeah, the other the backbone to everything we do, man. Yeah. So, he's like the yeah. base of the tree and all the branches in a sense. Seriously, man. Yeah. Yeah, Fiverr, yo, that's, I got four out of five now, bro. You got Fiverr has to be the fifth one, bro, out of the three sample peeps. I'm not gonna Perfect. force you. You know how much love I got. <laughs> I don't force nothing, but the seats yeah. here on it, bro. Um, yeah, that's tremendous. I'm just actually trying to think of him talking to me for this long, and I just don't see it happening. <laughs> 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 All right, yo. Um, I'm gonna ask this last question, but before I do, I want to summarize why we had Biza here today, yo. Hey, we just gotta put on dope fucking artists in this area. I'm all about respecting the producer and uh, Biza embodies both of those themes for me. Uh, resample means a lot to me. Shout out Resample. Make sure you also go check out um, Speed Bumps on Bandcamp. Shout out Creation Pattern. Buy the physicals from them. Um, hit the Discord up for the Resample beat battles. And just shout out the main hip hop scene, man. So that's my little spiel. Those are your flowers while you can still smell them. And uh, <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Fuck Anything. yeah. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate oh, everything you do, dude. Fuck yeah. Thanks, man. Oh. Feelings the same, bro. So, I got the last question. If you ready. Yeah. Let's go. Where will Biza be one year from now? Dude, hopefully living in the same fucking spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fucking move these records again, man. Oh, my God, bro. Shit. Dude, living life, man. Trying to enjoy my life. Just making beats, dude. Making shit happen. Hopefully playing shows again, you know? Getting things together. Hopefully new projects, you know? Yeah. We got a new little uh, uh, 
uh, you know, studio thing in the works at the, the new spot. So with Crab Man, so there might be some some different shit. Some I gotta get Crab Man on too. Out. I keep slipping about that too. Fuck. Yeah, that'd be another. He's got a lot. Episode. He's got a lot of. He's got a lot of shit to talk about, dude. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, hell yeah, brother. You've been in this music scene for a minute, so yeah, and multiple not just not beats, just like everything, like jazz, everything. So yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. We'll get into that eventually. That's on the it's on the list. It's in the docket. But as yeah. I said, speed bumps out now. We sample beat battle discord. Hit it on the socials. Got it. Yeah. Shall I resample forever? Um, I just remembered I saw this. That's me and Freddie Stone. That's dope, dude. Congrats, Freddie Stone on the baby. Sang- yeah, congrats, dude. Shout out nice food again, man. And uh shout out Bizza, man. Um uh, thanks, dude. I think that's it, boss. I'm pretty much ready to dip unless you have any last sentence or two. Dude, no, just like I said, thanks to everyone for making it so dope of a community. That's what keeps me making beats, man. Keeps me going. Just people out there that are helping make it happen too, dude. It involves everyone. So, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, Shout out everyone, man. I love that, yo. Well, that's it for me, my friend. I'll talk to you later and have a great night. Peace, brother. Peace.